We'll get to your calls a little later. But right now we have a, a buddy of mine from New York on the line, uh, Christopher Quackenbush, getting off the throughway. Uh, you know, he, he's coming off the throughway. All of a sudden, the uh, toll booth person says, "Hey, pull over to the side of the road." The police want to pull you over. They can't come over. They say, hey, do you have drugs or guns in the car? He's like, no, I don't have any drugs or guns in the car. They take him out of the car. They thoroughly search his vehicle. They don't find anything. Uh, they start accusing him of being on crystal meth and all these other drugs. He passes the sobriety test. They still take him down to the office, impound his vehicle, and then demand blood and urine, folks. This is the new America. So we're going to go uh, step by step. Uh, with Christopher Quackenbush. Chris, just uh, tell people what you were doing that day and uh, where you were coming from. Well, basically, you know, uh, it was Sunday morning. It was like 11.30 when I actually got pulled over, but I was coming back from the city. And uh, basically, uh, what you just said, you know, I was coming through. His excuse was that that I went that I blew through a yield sign, you know, and I, I he had somebody pulled over. Uh, right beyond the yield sign, and um, I saw him, and I just I made the judgment, and I, I thought it was fine, so I went. So surprised that I was even getting pulled over to begin with, but what would even surprise me even more was, you know, he spent about 20 seconds on the yield sign and went straight to the, where's the drugs, where's the guns, and all that kind of talk, and, you know, it wasn't a lot, you know, only seconds later, and I'm out uh, in front of the vehicle, and, you know, it's crazy because, um I've dealt with cops before, and they usually will have you, like, empty your pocket. He went straight into my pocket, and while he was asking me, like, tons of questions and stuff, like, you know, I was surprised. Right in my front pocket, he was grabbing things out, and, uh, you know, it was just ridiculous. And, you know, I did I did all the field tests, like you said, and then basically, you know, he goes, you're under arrest for DWAI drugs, and I was like, baffled by the whole thing. Actually, to back up, because what happened was he um, uh, went radioed in, and two more SUVs came up. So now there was three New York State, uh, New York State troopers on the scene, um, you know, repeatedly doing the stinger thing, whatever that stigma, stigma, you know what I'm talking about. You know, they kept doing that to me, and they were cracking all these jokes. I, I kind of thought they were on drugs, the way they were acting. It was really No, they think it's a big joke. It's very funny when someone's about to have their livelihood messed with, man. It's a big oh, joke yeah. to them. And, and I want to explain this to people. They take you into uh, custody. They impound your car. Now, have you been able to see these videotapes of you doing the sobriety test? Are, are they out there? I hope you're demanding no, them. No, um, you know, what I hear about up here... Um, is the way they handle it. They don't really deal with videotapes. Too much. Uh, I don't know. I, so I they're telling because... you that the videotapes, their dash cam videos, don't even exist. No, we don't even have any footage of anything. I wish we did because I basically moonwalked through all their stuff. It was so, you know, and he failed me on everything that I did. That's what was surprised. It was so funny. He said that I, you know, you're supposed to lift your foot up six inches and said you, li you lifted your foot up over six inches. Uh, you know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. Then they get me down, and they, they, they want blood and urine, and, and that's where I just drew the line, you know. I, I was like, you know what? And, you know, being – I was kind of intoxicated in emotions, to tell you the truth. I was mad, angry, cold. You know, when I finally got to a point where I actually could say no to something, I just – you know, and now the ramifications for that are crazy. I'm going to lose my license for a year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even well, know. Well, tell people. Let's, 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 let's go through – what this actually means for you because while it's fun and games for them you know you got to feed yourself you got to pay bills you got to get to work and now they want to take your license away because you refused to submit to their slave state ideals of taking blood and urine they are saying there's you, you need to you need to lawyer up and lawyer up quick and say look if you're going to charge me with DWAI and you didn't want to give me a breathalyzer and you're uh, you know from our, our previous conversation they were saying things like what are you smoking crystal meth I mean that is outlandish oh, yeah. to me I, I mean are you on my, crystal meth my arms for tracks for needles and, and and it was funny too because I carry around these like those little dent picks with the, the little white plastic picks with the brushes and I yeah. had this like big case of him, and he, I swear, he spent like 10 minutes on these picks, doing, so what are you doing with the picks? He's always like, he's acting like I'm dipping him in acid, and it's just all this ridiculous stuff, uh, you know, it was, just, it was like you said, it was a game, they were playing with my iPod, they had all my clothes, my stuff from the weekend, my travel bag, they had it all over my car, people were all going by all slow, and, and here's another thing that just developed with it, um, because I'm a... 
uh, health care, because I'm in the health care field, uh, the Department of Health was notified of my arrest, and I was called into my um, job by the owners, and they told me, look, you know, we got this notification that you were instead of right on the, I was so embarrassed, like my the boss who really likes me a lot sees this DWAI drug, I'm like turning red in his mm-hmm. office, and basically what's going to happen is depending on the outcome of, uh, you know, the, the uh, trial or whatever, um, you know, I could want to lose my job over this, you know, so I, I, I don't think it'll come, I hope it won't come. It's just really sad, you know what I mean, to see how much power you know, these people have, and they're able to just micro-analyze your life. You know, it's just getting more ridiculous as time goes on, you know. Um, Absolutely. Really- I want to go over this again, and if there's any listener out there that can help Chris, uh, we're going to give out an email, or you can contact me on my Facebook or my MySpace, and we'll try to get you in touch. But the police are claiming that Chris was intoxicated. They can't provide, although there were three police vehicles there, they can't provide one dashboard cam. Okay? He refuses to take the blood and urine test because it's outlandish. It's ridiculous. He passed the sobriety test. He wasn't pulled over for speeding. He wasn't swerving. He wasn't driving recklessly. This wasn't nighttime. It was in the middle of the day. It wasn't even noon yet. And these guys are having a party while they're really costing somebody's livelihood. So do you have an email address, uh, Chris? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it's music is still M-U-Z as in zebra, I-C-I-V-I-L-L, at Yahoo. Mm-hmm. Give it one more time for the listeners. One more time. M-U-Z-I-C-I-V-I-L-L at Yahoo.com. And I'm really imploring any of the listeners that can help out just maybe by giving advice or filing something for Chris to really help him out. Because when we live in a state where you don't really have redress of grievances, when you can't face your accusers, what are we fighting for? What's left of our Constitution, of our Bill of Rights, of the late, great United States of America? And if this can happen to somebody coming off the throughway, leaving the city, somebody who works, um, what, what do you work, like 40 to 60 hours a week? I know I know. in your field oh, yeah. you have to work yeah, 40 to 60 hours a week just to get by. You know, this isn't some homeowner, this isn't some banker, this is somebody who's just trying to live, trying to be able to pay the bills of an apartment, trying to pay car insurance. And I can relate to that. That's what I'm trying to do every month, keep my head above water while these people take more and more and the slave state becomes more and more apparent. You know, I was talking to my brother uh, before I talked to you. He called me up about the situation and he's talking about how there are uh, cameras going up on the streets of Johnstown all over the corners there. Yeah, it's crazy. The whole thing's just getting more and more robotic, the way these people act and treat. There's just no, you know, it's, it's either all negative emotions or none at all type of thing. It's just it's crazy that you can't even, you know, I think the whole idea of it, it's supposed to be to serve and protect, but it's really, it's so, it's far from that. And I'm not trying to take away, I'm sure there's probably some good police officers and stuff out there, but when it's so far and few in between, it's like, how do you, you know, it's like... Yeah, no, I mean, there are obviously good police officers out there, and I'm not trying to paint the picture that every cop in the world is bad. But, again, when you get pulled over with no probable cause, the conversation immediately moves from, why did you blow that yield sign, into, are you on heroin? Let me see your your arms for track marks. Are you smoking crystal meth? And then they want to start talking about toothpicks. I mean, literal dental yeah. floss toothpicks, as though that's that's now contraband. That's some kind of drug paraphernalia is over the top, over yeah. the top, man. Tell me some of the uh, the things they had to do: the walk in the straight line, probably the alphabet, the hold your oh, foot yeah. up. Yeah, they ahead. had me do they had me do the alphabet, and he 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 just told me to say the alphabet, not backwards or anything like that. And when I finished it, he was like, "I told you to stop P," and I was like, "Okay." He, he totally never said that because I was paying very well attention. And he uh, he had me do another thing that the only thing I could think of, I think, that might have made him mad, and I wasn't really trying to make him mad, but there's that one thing where they do the ten steps and then you do the little swivel thing yeah. or whatever. And uh, uh, I didn't really understand, like, the terminology and, like, the way he was – doing the thing, and I just wanted to do it well, so I had him do it a couple times, and I'm like, I'm, he did it once, 
And I was like, sir, could you just show me that again? And then, you know, he did it again. And then I but that little turn, I don't understand. So he did it like three times. And like the third time he was like, oh, I was like, oh man, I hope I didn't just like hurt his ego or something because he made this like No, you shouldn't noise. challenge the gods, Chris. You start challenging the Lord officers, the men with the guns, and then bad things happen to you. I, I and, it's so, and it's so crazy too because the lawyers I've talked to so far, it's like, they they're they're only like a, a like one step away from being as as crazy as they are because they told me they're all you're so stupid. Why would you just not give your blood and your urine and all this stuff? And like, <laughs> no, you don't say nothing. You have no right. Don't you understand that? And da da da. The minute you start talking about your rights and this and that with these people, then that's it. You know. You